Uh, welcome to today's lecture. Today we are going to discuss drugs used in the management of tuberculosis. As we all know that tuberculosis is one of the common conditions in Zambia. So today we are going to look at the management of tuberculosis. To begin with, To begin with, tuberculosis is a bacterial disease caused by microbacterium tuberculosis. Occasionally, it's caused by microbacterium bovix and also microbacterium africanum. So tuberculosis is mostly caused by microbacterium tuberculosis. So that's a positive organism for tuberculosis. So we are discussing the management of tuberculosis. So the major cause of tuberculosis is microbacterium tuberculosis. Welcome to the aims of management of tuberculosis. Our aims of go in the management of tuberculosis. So the first one is to cure the patient of TB or tuberculosis. The aim is to cure the patient of tuberculosis. So if a patient has tuberculosis, our aim is to make sure that we cure the patient of tuberculosis. Our second aim is to prevent the development of drug resistance. So in the management of tuberculosis, we need to make sure that we prevent drug resistance by educating, educating the clients to, be, to take medication on the light time every day to, pre, to prevent drug resistance. Uh, the next point is to prevent both death to prevent death from active TB. So we need to prevent death from active TB. The other aim is to prevent TB relapse, which is the most common in uh, TB patients. They have a tendency of not taking medication. So TB, the usual undergo TB relapse, TB comes back. The other aim is to prevent the transmission of tuberculosis to other patients. So there are aims in the treatment of tuberculosis to prevent the transmission of TB to other to others. We are going to look at the categories of TB. Categories of TB. So category one, we have pulmonary tuberculosis. So when you test the client as a uh, new uh, sputum smear positive and also sputum smear negative, they are under pulmonary uh, tuberculosis, they are under category one. So these categories, they, they are going to help us in the uh, giving of medication. So category two, two are those with extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Those with extrapulmonary tuberculosis is the tuberculosis which has spread to other organs of the body. And again, we have TB relapse. TB relapse are those who used to take medication, then TB relapse again. They are under category two. TB relapse. Category three, we have pediatrics. Category three is pediatrics. So those are the categories in the treatment of tuberculosis. So in this slide, we are going to discuss the first line treatment, uh, first line drugs in tuberculosis. So the first one is rifampicin, which is uh, given by the symbol R. We have isonazide, which is given by the symbol H. Parazinamide given the symbol Z, Isambotol is given by the uh, symbol E, and streptomycin, which is given by the symbol Z. So in this slide, we are going to discuss the first line treatment or first line drugs in the treatment of tuberculosis. And also, there are other drugs we use, second line drugs we use in the treatment of tuberculosis, such as ketamycin, amikacin. These are in the second line treatment of tuberculosis, but today we are going to discuss the first line treatment of tuberculosis. So TB treatment regimes. So TB treatment regime is have first phase is the initial phase. This is designed to kill the uh, 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 to kill the lapid bacteria or bacilli. So we kill the growing bacilli and also the semi dormant bacilli. That is in the initial phase in the treatment of tuberculosis. The second one is the continuous phase. That is where we cure or eliminate the multiplication or reduce the multiplication of the TB. 
the bacteria and also to deduce the failure and also relapse. So under categories, as we mentioned, we have category one, which we said is extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, category one, which we said is pulmonary tuberculosis. Category two, we said is extrapulmonary tu uh, tuberculosis and also TB relapse. Category three, we said is uh, pediatric tuberculosis. So under category one, first two months, we give rifampicin, we give isoniazide, we give parazinamide, and we give isambodo, the first two months. The last six months, we give this drug for eight months. The last six months, we give isoniazide and isambodo. Category two treatment, we, we include people with severe TB or those with TB relapse or those who have extrapulmonary tuberculosis. So first two months we give dimfampicin, isoniazide, parazinamide, isamboto, and streptomycin for the first two months. Then we, the other month, one month we give uh, dimfampicin, isoniazide, parazinamide, and also isamboto. Then the last five months you give isoniazide and isamboto. That's for eight months, it adds up to eight months. Pediatric treatment, so we have first no severe TB, you give two months lymphampicin, you give uh, isoniazide, and also you give parazinamide for two months. The last eight months you give lymphampicin and isoniazide. So in, in tuba, uh, pediatric tuberculosis, we give the medication for eight for 10 months. Severe TB in pediatrics, we give first two months, you give uh, rifampicin, you give parazinamide, you give isoniazide, and also you give streptomycin. And also you give second month, you give for one month, you give rifampicin, isoniazide, para, uh, parazinamide. Then the last five months, you can give uh, rifampicin and also isoniazide. So that's what we give in the treatment of tuberculosis. So we're going to look at individual drugs. We're going to look at individual drugs. So the first drug, as we mentioned, lifampicin, it comes as a tablet. Indication or uses, it's used in combination with other drugs. The mode of action of this drug, it kills the semi-dormant parcerine. So in the parcerine of tuberculosis, is in the semi-dormant phase, lifampicin kills that parcelline and it's also bactericidal in action that's a mode of action it's bactericidal meaning it completely kills the bacteria so the mode of action of lymphampicin is bactericidal it completely kills the bacteria the side effects of lymphampicin the side effects of lymphampicin we have anorexia abdominal pains hepatitis and also reduced effectiveness of oral contraceptives. Reduced effectiveness of oral contraceptives. So if a client is taking oral contraceptives, you can advise them to use other contraceptives apart from oral contraceptives because it reduces the effectiveness of oral contraceptives. And also the, others, the other side effects is urine discoloration. Other people say orange urine. So the urine changes the color, it becomes orange. And also the other side effects is acute renal failure. Acute renal failure. So this drug can cause acute, it has the side effects of acute renal failure. The other thing is uh, thrombocytopenia. It induces the white blood cells in the body. So a client need to be, need to do a full blood count to monitor the white blood cells in a patient's body. The other, the dose, of infampicin, we give 10 milligrams per kg body weight. 10 milligrams per kg body weight. That's a dose for infampicin. The other drug is isoniazide. Also comes as a tablet, indication, or uses. You use it in combination with other drugs. The mode of action is bactericidal. So it kills about 90% of the total population of the bacillus during the first few days of, of giving the drug. So this drug is bactericidal, which means it 
kills the bacteria. It kills the bacteria. The side effects of isonazide, we have peripheral neuropathy. So when it, it, has, it has peripheral neuropathy, hence we need to give vitamin B6 to reduce its effect. So you give vitamin uh, B6 to reduce the, effective, the effect of peripheral neuropathy. It has also some joint pains and also some confusions, convulsions. The client can experience convulsions when he's taking this drug. So those are some of the side effects of isonazide. The dose of isonazide is five milligrams per kg body weight, five milligrams per kg body weight, five milligrams per kg body weight. That's a dose for isonazide. The other drug we mentioned is isambotol. The drug we mentioned is isambotol. Indication for isambotol is used in treatment with other drugs. The mode of action, this one is bactostatic, which means it inhibits the growth of a bacteria. The mode of action of isambotol is bactostatic. It just inhibits the growth of the bacteria. That's the mode of action of isambotol. The side effects of the sambuto is optic neuritis. Optic neuritis, it can affect, it causes inflammation of the optic nerve. Optic neuritis. So hence, this drug is not recommended in children. So we don't give isambotol in children because of the optic neuritis causes inflammation of the optic nerve. The other side effects is skin rash and also joint pains. The dose of Isambotol is 5 milligrams per kg body weight. 5 milligrams per kg body weight. The other drug we mentioned is parazinamide. Parazinamide, the indication or uses, you give it in combination with other drugs. The mode of action of parazinamide is bactericidal, which means it completely kills the bacteria, as we mentioned. The side effects of uh, parazinamide is joint pains. So a client will be complaining of joint pains. There's hepatitis, that's inflammation of the liver, and also there will be skin rash, and also anemia. So when a client is taking parazinamide, make sure that make sure that you do a full blood count to monitor uh, the white, the blood cells in the body and also abdominal discomfort. So a client to complain of abdominal discomfort. The dose of uh, parazinamide is 25 milligrams per kg body weight. 25 milligrams per kg body weight. The other drug is streptomycin. Streptomycin indication is uh, TB treatment in combination with others. The mode of action is bactericidal. Even it, it completely kills Bacteria, bactericidal, it completely kills bacteria. Side effect of streptomycin is auditory and vestibular nerve damage. Auditory and vestibular nerve damage. So this drug affects the auditory and the vestibular nerve. It can damage the auditory and vestibular nerves. And also renal damage and also skin lash. Dose of Streptomycin is uh, 15 milligrams per kg body weight. 15 milligrams per kg body weight. 15 milligrams per kg body weight. Thank you for listening to this video. If you have any questions, you can contact me in person. Then I'm going to uh, assist you.